we get a lot of questions about people thinking about moving to Northern Nevada. And when they do, they typically only think of Reno. But actually, Reno is attached to a city called Sparks. And again, for those of you that would be new to the area, you wouldn't really even know if we were in Sparks or in Reno if I didn't tell you or that you hadn't lived here for a long time. We did a video about Reno about a month ago. And today what we're going to do is talk about the pros and cons of Sparks, give you a little brief update on some of the neighbors and some of the areas and why Sparks might make sense for you versus being in Reno. What I think sometimes people forget is Sparks is about 25, 30% of the area. So it's in the Northeast corner. If you were looking again at that map that we use many times where McCarran loops around and really to access Sparks, the only downside to it is you're coming off of 80 and you have Pyramid Highway, you have Sparks Boulevard and you have Vista. And so all three of those roads head North. And for those of you that live out in Sparks, which now goes way further out than it used to, if you're a person that has a normal nine to five job, sometimes you're gonna have some traffic issues that you're dealing with with once you kind of hit 80 and you're trying to get out that direction to where you might want to live. The pros are is that the average price per square foot typically in Sparks has always been a little less expensive so you can get a little more bang for your buck if you live in Sparks. And what has really made Sparks popular over the last handful of years is that if you hop on 80 and you go east and it's about 16, 18 miles out to what's called USA Parkway, out there is a development called Trick. It is literally the largest industrial commercial center in the country. I think it might even be in the world, but it is huge and it is where Tesla, and Panasonic and Switch and a bunch of other companies are going and there's so much to build out there. They're gonna be building out there for years and years and years. And so a lot of people, what they did is they wanted to live in Sparks. So they would have easy access to USA Parkway. And for those, some people that can't even afford to live in Sparks, you can actually go another 15 miles past there. You can go to Fernley and there's some other cities that we can find affordable living options for you. Let's start off again. We're in that Northeast corner and we're gonna talk about the oldest areas of Sparks, which is just Sparks and East Sparks, where half of that happens on the inside of South McCarran and half of it happens on the outside. And those are kind of your original OG areas. Those homes are going to be a lot of properties that were built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So you're going to see prices that are all over the place, but they are the most affordable. And as you just jump McCarran, all that happens is the homes don't change a lot. They just get a little bit newer. We actually just did a transaction where you're seeing a nice home come on the market for $425,000 and you get yourself a nice three bedroom, two bath, two car garage. This particular house was completely remodeled. My son actually lives in that area of East Sparks and he's got a nice house. When I say nice, they're small. They're three bed, two bath, two car garage, 1,200-ish square feet. His house, because it's further to the east, is built more in the late 80s, early 90s. And as you work your way back in, again, the houses don't change a lot, but the type of property that you're going to see, it just gets older. They're all very similar. And you can find tons of stuff between four hundred dollars and $500,000. As you go a little north of there, there's an area called Deandria. And Deandria is all basically relatively new homes. There used to be a golf course in there, and then it went away, and now the golf course has come back. I think at the time we did this, they only have nine of the 18 holes open. Eventually they'll open the whole thing as far as that stuff goes. But the cool part about DeAndrea is when you come in that first section, there are some really inexpensive, I call them attached homes or small lot homes. And as you work your way back in there, there's all kinds of stuff that's been built over the last 25 years. And it's kind of private, it's to itself. And when you're in DeAndrea, there's not amenities. You gotta come out of DeAndrea, but again, it's not overly big. And I think the fact that the golf course has come back is really gonna help that neighborhood because it looked great. It reminds me honestly a lot of what you'll see in the South Meadows, similar type property stucco tile roof, that whole Vegas style neighborhood that you see all over Reno and Sparks. The one other thing that you can do in Sparks in these areas, and as you start to creep out a little further towards the north, there are lots of condo options. And we were looking at this before, you can actually find condos in Sparks that were under $200,000. Obviously they're gonna be small. There's a other couple of complexes that you can find stuff more in the twos and $300,000 range. That'll be a little bigger, maybe a little bit nicer, but I know of a handful of condo complexes in Sparks for some of that maybe is new to the area or isn't sure how long they're gonna be here, or maybe doesn't wanna buy a house yet because they want to get more familiar with the area. There's some really good, low priced inexpensive options for you as far as the condo section goes. As you go out a little further into more, not quite all the way out to Spanish Springs, but you're off what's called Los Altos Parkway. So Los Altos Parkway comes off of Sparks Boulevard and Vista Boulevard and just loops around in a big loop. All those homes have been built, like say in the last 30 years. I know when I bought my first house, this was an area we looked at. The reason we didn't buy at that time was there weren't a whole lot of amenities out there. There wasn't a whole lot of stuff going on in that section of Sparks. And now 30 years later, there's all sorts of new schools. There's all sorts of new parks, the roads. I mean, everything out there is actually really nice. And that area is still not that far to get back to the freeway. So if you're working and you got to get to USA Parkway or you're trying to get to South Reno, you can take the Southeast Connector. It's not too far out, but the homes, again, they'll be a little bit bigger and a little more Vegas style, that whole stucco tile roof thing that we keep talking about. 
versus what we just talked about in that initial East Sparks and Old Sparks areas. They're just bigger, newer type houses than those. The other cool thing is when you live in these neighborhoods now is you can cut across Sparks, where before you'd be on Pyramid Highway, Sparks, and Vista, and there was no way to get across. And now roads like Los Altos Parkway, you can cut across those roads, and there is tons and tons of shopping out there. There's a big, huge Home Depot shopping center and everything around it now, where before you literally used to have to come all the way back into Reno for a lot of these things, which now you don't have to do with. So these areas in Sparks off Los Altos Parkway, you can find tons of home between five and $600,000, which in Reno is starting getting harder to harder to find. I was out showing a client homes. He was looking to spend around 550 and tons and tons of options pop up. The thing you have to be careful with is a lot of these homes originally were built and sold for two and $300,000 and now they're pushing 30 years old is you have to be aware of what kind of shape they're in. So whether it's the roof, the water heater, the HVAC, the air conditioner, the plumbing, the electrical, these are the type of things that are going to start to have problems now that the homes are 30 years old. So you'll see two homes that are basically identical and one might sell for a completely different price than another just based upon that they've done all of these amenities and updates to these properties. Then from there, as you go a little bit further out, we're talking about areas that are near the golf course out there. There's Red Hawk. Out in those areas, the schools are new, the access is new. There's a couple of golf courses out there, but the amenities that you get are not as easily accessible. There's a big Rayleigh shopping center as the road starts to loop around and it's nice out there and there are tons of homes. You can spend anywhere from five, 600,000. You can get a condo. You can get a small lot homes up to all kinds of big custom homes. And that road just keeps going out as far as you can drive. It's funny how these areas when I looked out there 20 years ago where there's this big windmill. There used to be just a trailer it's literally sat out in the middle of nowhere that was saying all this area is going to get built out and now it's built out like crazy. So there's two sides. So on the east side of what's called Pyramid Highway, it is mostly residential. When you get on that west side where Spanish Springs High School is, those homes are a little older, just south of where the high school is. There's some homes that have been there a lot longer. These were areas that were considered way out here 40 and 50 years ago. But near the high school is much more, I don't want to say it's lower end, but it's not nearly as upgraded as fancy as you would see on the east side of Pyramid Highway. And even now, if you go further out on Pyramid Highway, you get to Palomino Valley, it takes you all the way out to Pyramid Lake. This would be another area where if you wanted to be on 10 acres on a dirt road and be sort of out by yourself and not have people bother you, I've got clients who live out on Right Hand Canyon Road. It's like five miles on a dirt road. It feels like they're in the middle of nowhere. But when you go from their house back to town, you're still back to the airport in 45 minutes. So it's really kind of nice where you can be in four different areas that are way outlying on huge acres and you're not that far back to town. So it feels like you're way out in the middle of nowhere but again, you're really not. Sparks again is about 25%, 30% of the population here. A couple small negatives, but the huge, huge positive is most of what you can buy is gonna be under $300 a square foot. So you're gonna get more bang for your buck. And I have a lot of clients who have bought out there for those exact reasons. It's better to buy a rental property out there for some of those exact reasons. It's not that far to get back into town. So if you want more specific information exclusively about a specific part of Sparks, by all means, comment below, send us a message. We'd be happy to get you that information. And again, if you're enjoying the content that we're putting out there, please subscribe to the channel. We're going to get in much more detail about Sparks and some of these areas out that way. We appreciate you watching to the end of the video and we'll see you on the next video.